Praise the Lord. I'm Bill Glad, and welcome once again to The Word Goes Forth. Now, this is the program that allows you to call in for prayer. And, you know, we tell you every week, there's nothing we can do but pray and agree with you according to the Bible. We're, I, I firmly believe the Word of God is true. The Bible is true. And I got blessed Saturday night. I watched a two-hour program on, it was called The Ancient Secrets of the Bible. Now, this was a secular program. And yet, they had intellectuals on both sides of the coin. Some trying to disprove the Bible, some trying to, to prove it. And, and you know, the truth of it was, the Bible w did win out. And uh, it was there for anyone to watch. I didn't even know it was going to be on. But it blessed me because there's a lot of things in the Bible that any one of us can doubt. This one party doubted the story about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego when they got thrown into the fire in the furnace. And, and uh, normally we know anybody thrown into a fire would die. But the scientists proved, or the scholars, whoever they were, proved that they could have survived. The only thing they couldn't prove was who the fourth man was in the furnace with them that was walking around. And the Bible tells us that there was a fourth man. Nebuchadnezzar saw him, and he was there, definitely. So we have to operate by faith on that. But we're going to have a song by the Riando Boys tonight. We're going to have um, Rudy Schiller and Ron LaCourse and Effie and Bassey here. And I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be a good program. Zola Levitt, again, will be sharing a, a message on the Kingdom Part 2. And, uh, you know, we tell you every week, if you like some of these tapes that we play, these people are very good to us. They allow us to play them because we're not selling them the tapes or anything. If you want more, we'll put you in touch with our ministries and you can go ahead and ask them. But uh, we're not here to sell or, or to ask for your money. We're just here to, to teach you the Word of God the best we know and to offer you a Bible. And we give them out. We don't ask you for your support or anything. We just want you to read the book, see for yourself what God would have you to do. I, I firmly believe, and I can only speak for myself, but I believe that Jesus is getting ready to come again. The Bible tells me this through the Word of God, and, and I believe the Word of God for what it says. And, and to prove it, I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to read from the New International Version, starting with Luke chapter 15. I'll give you just a minute to get your Bible open up to that. Luke 15, verse 1. And as you're doing that, I want you to know that at the end of the program, we're going to put up our, our name and address as we do every week. And sometimes our ending doesn't always get the address up there. So I'd like you to know it's the word goes forth. 77 Margaret Street, right here in Saranac Lake. And the zip code is 12983. Now you can reach me in the phone book or anywhere if you need a Bible. Again, there's no, no charges. This New Testament is a special edition that we've got, and we dedicated it to Armin Riando. I, in fact, I'd like to add Earl Riando to it too. You know, they, they were with the Word Goes Forth when it started, and this winter they both went to be with the Lord. So... I guess they're up there helping get things ready for the, the second return. We'll see him again. Anyway, if you got your Bible now, and I hope you opened it to Luke 15, verse 1. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, 
there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So, that, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the, the fatted calf because he, has, he is, has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed you or your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate on my, with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you killed a fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Now, there's a lot of people that seem to be getting lost these days. We're in a special time. And I was thinking about this the other day. You know, we, we teach the theory of evolution in our schools. I don't believe in it. I believe the theory of creation that comes from the Bible. But if you think about it, if we teach evolution, we're planting seeds in the minds of our children that maybe there isn't a God. And if I didn't think there was a God, I certainly wouldn't want to obey God. I'd, I'd go out and do as I darn well please. And, and I often wonder if that's why we have some of the... Uh, rebelliousness that we have in our nation is because we have forsaken God. And maybe it's time that we get back to it. Anyway, we hope to tell you more about God in this program. And at the end, I'll come back and tell you how you can have God. But in the meantime, we're going to have a song by the Rianda Boys via videotape. And then we'll come back to uh, uh, Ron LaCourse and, and Rudy Scheller. And stay with us. You're going to enjoy the meeting. Forever, a 
Top as ever. So welcome back to Word Goes Forth. Uh, I'm Rudy Scheller, and this is Ron Lacourse. For any of our first-time viewers, Ron, <laughs> I imagine our, our audience is quite large by now. Oh yes. After 12 or 13 years of doing this, <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while, God always confirms that there's at least one person watching. So whoever you are out there, we thank you for that. So Ron, what's um, Anything new, or would you like to share something with pe the people this week? Or? Oh, gosh, Rudy, it's new every morning with Jesus. You know? Amen. You know, and it's so true because I can remember before I became a Christian, you know, there wasn't that much. You know, the days were the same as they were, but now in Christ I have something I Absolutely. eagerly look forward to. That's right. What are you going to show me today, Lord? <laughs> well, you know, I got a friend in Jesus. That's right. I got a friend in Jesus, and I can walk with him daily just to see what he's going to do, looking to him. Yeah, that's right. You know, it says he sticks closer than a brother. That's right, and he is. Oh, he's so good. That's you know, good. He's just so good. <laughs> well, especially with the uh, um, uh, the weather changing and uh, <laughs> springtime yes. in the air and things changing and coming new again, it's certainly a good time for our viewing audience, for those people who don't know Christ, to uh, make a new change Amen. in their life. Amen, too. just like that. as good time as ever, right? Yes, yes. Just so. like that, what Bill read, that prodigal son returning, right. you know, it said that's he was right. dead, and now he's alive again, you know, and that's the way we were without Christ. We're dead. Yeah. The Bible tells us we're dead in our sins. That's right. I mean, we may not see the manifestation of it, but the truth of it is we're dead. That's right. And the only way we come back to life is by receiving Jesus Christ. Yeah, Jesus did say that even when he walked the earth. He that's said. Right. He said, uh, I've come to uh, seek and save those which are lost. He, uh, because he said that the world was condemned already. It was already, it, it, it's, it's like past tense. Yep, sense, it is, right? it is past tense. Yeah. And you know, we encourage you to really consider these things that we say tonight. Mm. And we want you to, to get serious with God. And we, if you use the phone, 891-2653, we'd be glad to pray with you for any need whatsoever. There are some people who say they cannot tell Whether they are saved or whether all is well Say they only can hope, hope that it's so I was there when it happened, so I guess I is not real Though the world may argue That they cannot feel Heavy burdens to do Leave all sins to go I was there when it happened So I guess I ought to know I was there when Jesus saved me I was there when he forgave me Took away my burden Gave me peace with it can't make it out it's real I'm going to shout it I was there when it happened so I guess I ought to know Praise the Lord, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah Back again Yeah So Effian, how are Hallelujah. you? Okay, keeping Good. as well as I can Good And the Lord is here with us Amen and That's a good place to be that's right. <laughs> the um, it's uh, the reading that Bill had tonight yeah. was certainly uh, a, a good reading, mm. and I do encourage the viewers uh, that are watching tonight, Effian, um, that they put their faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, man, that's what it's all about. <laughs> you know, we're we're just ordinary lay people that uh, try to share the gospel, bring in news about what's going on uh, around the world and in our communities and. 
and hopefully you'll in, in, enjoy what you hear. But at the same time, we really, really encourage you to put your faith in Christ, to read the Word of Almighty God. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And for your and establish your own personal rela relationship with uh, the Lord. Because I think that's the bottom line. Well, that's it. That's what that story is all about. I mean, uh, had to say. Uh, the, the portion that Bill read in uh, John 8. For those of you who didn't tune in in time to hear the portion he was reading, uh, Bill read earlier on from John chapter 8. He read from verses uh, verse 12 and stopped at uh, verse 30. And uh, the last verse he read was interesting. He says, um, as he spoke these words, many believed in him. And that's what Rudy was talking about a while ago. The fact that this is what we really pray that would, would happen in your life as you listen, that you believe in Jesus, not just us, but in Jesus Christ, and that you read the Word of God to solidify that belief. Absolutely. Mm. So, praise God. Effian, it's winter time again. Oh, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's, it's back here. It's, uh, but we can't complain. It's been, no. it's been kind of good. It's been no. good. Yeah, we can't. No, absolutely. As a matter of fact, the weather's been real nice. And yeah. Uh, we've only had to shovel snow twice so far, as I'm sure people know, because uh, uh, if you've lived here long enough in the Adirondacks, <laughs> shoveling no. snow is a drag. <laughs> it's an art, <laughs> actually. So. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Father, we, we just thank you so much, Lord, for the, the provision you've made for our needs to be met. You said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Why? Because everyone that asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door is opened. Father, we thank you yes. for that provision. We leave these friends of ours before you, Lord. We join with them in faith, knowing that you are able to do, willing to do, and ready to do, even now, the things that we request in prayer. Yes. You say that if two of us shall agree as touching anything we mention in prayer, that you would do it for us. So in agreement, Father, we lift our brother who has his nerve, nervous problems. And Father, we thank you because you said you came to give peace, not the kind of peace the world gives. We ask for that peace in his life this evening. We ask God that even now, you will give him a revelation of your peace, that it will be an experience, not just something conceived in the mind. We pray, Father, that Jesus, oh, will be made known and clear to him in the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Father, for the brother who has uh, the, 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 the shoulder problem. Yes, I thank you because, Lord, your word says, with the stripes of Jesus Christ, we have been healed. Yes. And, Father, we, we hold on to that promise of yours. And we say, Lord, heal, touch his shoulder, and heal him in Jesus' name. Take the pain off. And we pray for the guy who has a visa. His visa is about running out. Lord, we ask for you to intervene in this situation that your will be done in the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray, God, that you will uh, touch the folks that have to do with the visa, that they will have compassion. And, Lord, we pray that you will make this friend know that you have done it. It's not coincidental. Yes. Thank you, Father, for hearing us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Then stay tuned. And then Bill and Ron are going to come back and tell you how you can get a Bible and answer any of your questions. In the meantime... 891-2653. Call us. We'll be glad to pray for you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you know, in um, you just heard some pretty powerful uh, prophetic messages coming to pass. In uh, chapter 13 of Revelations, verse 16, talking about the, the, the government, referred to it as the beast, because uh, Peter Lalon was just talking about the mark mm. in the hand. Verse 16 says, He also forced everyone, everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666. But you know, the thing that excites me, Ron, it says it's going to cause everyone to receive the mark. Mm -hmm. That means we as Christians are not going to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, Pentecostals or Baptists or Catholics or Protestants. I'm saying Christians, those following Christ. And, and I believe 
by faith. Now, I can be wrong on my interpretation, but I believe there's going to be a, a rapture as spoken of by Thessalonians, a catching away. It says, those of us which are alive and remain shall meet him in the air and be with him forevermore. Mm -hmm. But then there's going to be a three and a half year period where some folks that aren't sure of the word are going to get a chance to find out real fast. That's what it's all about, huh? <laughs> yeah. and, and of course, what happened this weekend. Yes. Bill, we're gonna, first we better do this prayer request. Uh, a brother of ours called in for a sister who has an infection on the bottom of her heel. And we Praise need to pray about that in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So, Father, we Thank ask you Jesus. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, that you administer to this sister, Lord, healing to her foot, Lord God, to yes, her Lord. body, Father. That you would just, we just plead the blood of Jesus on her yes, body, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, you know every need that she has, be it spiritual or physical, Lord. Yes, we lift her up Thank to you, you now. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we know that she's an open book to you. Lord, we'd ask that you minister to her in, in every area of her life. Yes, Lord. And, and especially, Lord, to that infection, Lord, that you would just cause it to be gone, to be made whole, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, mm -hmm. the person at home that wants Jesus Christ, how do they get it? Well, what church do they go to? We got 41 churches in the Trilex. The Word of God tells us, that, and it just is in that case, Jesus went and paid the price for us. He went to the cross willingly. He said, I'll die for them in their place. I'm guiltless. They're guilty. The guiltless for the guilt. Guilty. And Jesus paid the price. And, and we must receive him as a gift from God. We must call upon that name of Jesus Christ, recognizing that we are sinners and, guilt, and worthy of death. Amen. But that Jesus went there in our place. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And it doesn't matter where they do this. It doesn't matter, Bill. Jesus makes house calls. Amen. You know, one other step, Ron, we always push the, the, the word of God here. This is the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament and the New Testament combined makes up the Bible. And we've always said that. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's a fact. But this is the New Testament written in a modern, easy to understand language. It's, this is uh, today's English version, and it's from Matthew through Revelations. Now, the scriptures that Peter Lalonde shared, the scriptures you shared about the born again, that's in here. And we'd like you to read it for yourself. And we'll send it to you free, mm -hmm. but we've got to know where to send it. And as a bonus, as long as these tapes last, we'll send you one of those. They're the, a collection of music by the Riando Boys, for over the last 14 years that we've been in the radio and the TV. We've mm. been TV going on 11 and 11 or 12 and the, the radio 14 years. Yes. But as long as it lasts, there's no charge. We don't want your money, but we want you to have it so you'll know what we're saying is true. And then, you know, we all have loved ones, and, and maybe you've already lost a loved one, or maybe you have a loved one that's very sick. You can have that blessed assurance, Amen. and it's so important. You know, yes. I had a party... Uh, asked me the other day, well, what about this business where Jesus said, today is the day of salvation? Well, there is no tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, it's today. And I believe that's what he was talking about. Today is the day of salvation. You're not promised tomorrow. So, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Simple as that. That's what the word says in Romans 10. Amen. Any other advice for him, Ron? You know, Bill, the, the reality of that is today is the day of salvation. Amen. If Dad wasn't saved, and he says, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. Might have been too late. He'd have been too late, right? And Amen. It's the same thing. Today is the day. If God's Amen. speaking to your heart, don't say, well, I'll wait. You may not have time to wait. You know, I often wonder, Ron, how many people have ever gone to a Christian wake like that. I don't know, but boy, that was a good it, time. It's not right? a sad time, is it? <laughs> no. We rejoice. <laughs> And, and you can have that same joy in your heart. Yeah. You know, we, we miss him, and we're going to miss yes. him. Yes. But we look forward to seeing him again. We have that hope, and that hope comes only through Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other name under heaven Amen. by which a Amen. man must be saved. You know, Bill, I told the little kids that came in that saw dead, I said, you know, this is his old house. He's got a new one now, and that's Amen. the truth. And you could, you know, we need to be mindful of that. That's right. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, a temple of God. So take good care of it. With that, I think our time is up. Uh, I'd like to thank Effie and Bassey and Rudy Scheller, and of course you, Ron, and, 
everyone that's involved with this ministry. We hope you'll join us again next week. God bless.